and Old Gus is the biggest catfish in the pond. Legend has it the only bait that'll catch Old Gus is a piece of Old Gus himself. So every time they catch him, they cut off a little piece of him so they can catch him. Now, how did the very first person catch Old Gus? Well, that's a story for another time. Right now. TBTL. I saw a woman psychiatrist. And she said I was OCD, one cool dude. And she understands the way I think right now. And everything's cool, everything's copacetic, everybody's happy. And I'm happy too. I don't even know what that means. No one knows what it means, but it's provocative. Uh, they said, you know what, we need to have a third interview with you because the notes from the social workers that you seem anxious, high strung, and eccentric. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> that's the cornerstone. It's the business plan. And we've become great friends. I mean, close. We'll just sit in the front room and we'll sit there. He'll walk, he'll go to the front door, kind of knock on the door, and then sit down, then I'll sit, then he stands, and he's out in the front. And then he'll come in, we just sit there. And he'll stand, and I'll sit, and then, and then I stand, and you sit, and then we're both stand, looking at each other, and we're just nodding. Like a couple of nodders, right? Let's get to the jokes. All right, hello, good morning, and welcome everyone to a Thursday edition of TBTL, the show that just might be too beautiful to live. Very demure. My name is Luke Burbank. I am your host. Very mindful. Coming to you once again from Nashville, Tennessee, the music capital of the United States. Your if, voice is like a combination of Fergie and Jesus. I mean, I guess if you're talking about a certain kind of country music. Um, but this is a fun place. There is a lot going on. There was not a lot going on from my end of the recording for yesterday's show. And I just want to apologize <laughs> for being so, so low energy. I had, of course, taken a red eye flight. I hadn't gotten very much sleep. And, uh, you know, Sleepiness is the most common side effect. But I am so awake and enthusiastic and rested. I think I slept maybe 11 hours last night. And I am so ready to do today's episode of the show. So let the um, fun begin. Buckle up, friends. It's episode 4,272 in a collector series. My many hours of sleep allowed me to do the ultimate flex in a party town this morning. Um, just about as, and I'm, you know, you know, as listeners of this show, I know a little something about being smug. I've been smug almost my whole life, babe. Um, but I feel especially smug when I do this one thing in a party town, and uh, we'll talk about that. Speaking of party towns, or at least dive bars. Am I drunk? No. Am I intoxicated? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, Andrew has some thoughts on what's going on with the dive bar culture in Seattle, Washington, and we will find out about that. And we'll find out whose birthday, a.k.a. Blur's Day, it is. It's my birthday today. When we do the Blur's Day messages. Uh, this is, by the way, the time when I introduce the longest-running Cobro of the show. I do this each and every episode. He is best known for his depictions of the tall ships. And because we do video uh, tape or video record or whatever we call it these days... Thank God I'm not helping out with a high-tech cloud-based conference today. Um, because we film these things, he has started to really work on his look on camera, and I actually think it's it's working, seriously. See how I come to work? Yeah. I flat iron my hair, I do chi cheese out, I do viral vanilla. He's Andrew Walsh, and he's joining me right now. Good morning, my friend. That is a an apt, I would say. I almost said ironic, but no, it's an apt drop for you to introduce me because literally Chi-Chi's out literally I have my Chi-Chi's out and also let's see here 1127 and it's 11 uh, 28 right now I just got a um, I'm sorry 1228 don't fact check me on that I just got an email uh, guest question mark beauty entrepreneur and influencer starting her mm. own business and lessons um, learned dude if it's 
Jules Lebron. It's Jules Lebron. The person, the woman behind these very demure, iconic statements. Very mindful. We have to book her. She's probably the hottest get in America. No, I'm. You know what? I'm not going to. Uh, there's no need for me to. It's just a, one of those kind of cheesy press releases. But I'm not going to roast the person who. Uh, sure. But it is somebody with uh, 15,000 plus Insta followers. Um, but no, it is not. That's that a little person. bit too low of a number. That's dangerously. Mm. I mean, it's not close to the number that I have, but it's it's not a stratosphere away from the number I have. And that's what you need if you want to. If you're going to get on TBTL, you need to have uh, Instagram followers that's stratospherically higher than the number that Andrew and I have. You know, there was one other thing on my mind as we start the show, and then we'll uh, then we'll hand the mic back to you where you're doing actual things. Then I'll pass the mic to Andrew. No, I don't want <laughs> I don't it. want the mic. <laughs> would, Give it to him. What, I don't want the mic. What would Jay-Z do? Uh, he'd rap about it. <laughs> Rapping, rapping. Uh, it's amazing how old workaholics is now. I, I was watching 30 Rock, which is why we heard some 30 Rock tape at the beginning of the show. I was watching 30 Rock last night, and I, it was hard for me not to try to... I wish there was a politician who talked about like kind of context and everything that came before and everything that comes mm. after, because I, it's hard Someday. for me to like. It tied into. I'm trying to think of a way of making this interesting without just making it sound like a cliche thing of just like, wow, time passes, and that's basically all of my observations mm -hmm. these days. Well, <laughs> time really passes, doesn't it, Luke? Now let me talk to you about my doctor's bills. I really am trying desperately not to make the podcast that, but. 30 Rock, I guess I still think of it as a new show, which is obviously yes, ridiculous. It's been off the... Like, I think of, like, what is an old show? Cheers is an old show. Seinfeld is an old show. Yes. But 30 Rock is a contemporary show, right? No, yes. of course not. It's been off the air. Um, let's see here. Seasons. When was it off the air? Uh, two That's information that we could never know, and Andrew... That we should never know. <laughs> that we should. I don't yeah, want why to hear, look, I don't why hear I what you're about to say, because... I think, uh, I'm, and I don't mean to, um, mm, no, go ahead. to, to steal, I don't mean to steal the mic from you. <laughs> and then I Durst. pass the mic to Luke. <laughs> but I feel like it, it has to do with what age you were when you really locked in on something. Mm -hmm. And I was in high school, well, maybe when I locked in on Seinfeld. So that seems like very long ago, but I was like an adult who went to a nine to five job when I locked in on 30 rock. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm still an adult who goes to a nine to five job. Only one of those things is true, by the way. Um, I am an adult. I don't really have a nine to five job, but anything that I got into in my adulthood feels like it must, I don't know, two, three years ago. If you told me 30 Rock uh, debuted six years ago, I would say that sounds about right. Yes. And I'm not trying to hurt you with this information because I, I can't keep mm -hmm. it to myself. But 30 Rock mm -hmm. aired from uh, 2006 to essentially the end of 2012. It, 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 I guess they had a couple of episodes in January of 2013. But for all intents and purposes, let's say uh, it's 2012, which is like, f you know, f uh, what, uh, 12, year, uh, 12, mm -hmm. years 12 years ago. It's ago. been off yep. the air for 12 years, you know. And I, I, I in my brain last night as I was listening to Kenneth talk about old Gus, the catfish, mm -hmm. I, I was thinking about how I think I, it was lost on me when I was at the height of what TV creators, especially in that, the sort of, I, I guess, maybe the, the very tail end of the network, of the traditional like kind of sure. network era, sure. which by 2012, I mean, we had the streamers, we had obviously a million channels on cable, but you still, kind like, of, but NBC it was... still meant something yes more. original content was not nearly as as sort of um i don't want to say consolidated because really it's not consolidation it's more like frag fragmented like the streamers were not making as much original content as they do now i mean it was I don't even know what did Netflix even have original programming in 2012. Yeah, I, I think they did by that point. But it, and I guess like so part of my part of my um, kind of uh, struggles with contextualizing my aging is also the, the life that I've lived as an adult. You know, I'm 47 now, you know, it's closer to 50 than 40, you know, just in case anybody is not like super good at math the way I am. And as I think about that more and more. It, I didn't age in a, in as graceful a manner as a more traditional, like somebody who takes a more traditional sort of family route. You know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. the fa I think that people who have kids... At You've both lived in Arrested Development and can't deal with how long ago <laughs> Arrested Development came right. out. That's another one as well. You know, I've been dipping into that lately, maybe just feeling like I just want some, you know, just comfort television watching that I don't have to think about too much. So going back to some old faves. And these were hitting right when I was like kind of at the peak of what 
what like advertisers wanted to reach what you know like the uh-huh, you know like sure. kind of young adults like in 30s and maybe even early you 40s were for some of this i was a, a dink dual income no kids and um and you know i do think I think I told you this a, a long time ago when I was living in Wallingford, which has been quite some time now. Genevieve and I went to that Wallingford. Is it a bratwurst fest? It's some. It's like literally oh, don't miss the sausage. Fest. The, the worst Wallingford fest. worst. Exactly, and it's a little sausage uh, festival, which seems right up my alley. We only visited. You for, don't miss them for like a, a I don't know like one evening or whatever. It happened to be going on, so we swung through. And it takes place in this area that is actually at least when I was there, it was t- kind of took place in the the outside area. Kind of the courtyard of a school, of an elementary school. And it was an mm-hmm. old school type of school, if you will, like kind of brick building. I don't know when it was built, but it, it felt like it had some like kind of nice age to Minimal it. Minimal ADA compliance. Yeah. <laughs> all right. the good yeah, stuff. People were suffering all around us. Um, and I uh, just couldn't, couldn't, there was no dysentery, mo- no mobility. Rocketing through the <laughs> drinking fountains. But um, anyway, I, I walked into the building because they had like a little bake sale, like kind of in one of the rooms right inside. And I realized how long it had been. And keep in mind, this mm-hmm. is a while back now. Um, mm-hmm. But it was like the, the the smell of an old school building like really yeah. hit me and made me so nostalgic for like my own time. It really felt like a time machine, right? And it occurred to me that I let's say I was 40 at the time. Like, oh, this is hitting me especially hard because number one, as Genevieve says, nostalgia is my favorite drug. Um, and that's saying something. But also <laughs> <laughs> that um, that I think people who have kids kind of, you know, some I'm, you know, I don't want to put too specific a time on it, but sometime in your 20s or 30s or whatever you have kids by the very nature of caring for young people and then putting them through the school system themselves right. give you kind of contact to that world. And it, it kind of it might ease you in so that maybe one day you kind of look around, you're like, hey, the kids are now, you know, <laughs> they're 14 years old and, and, and that went by quick. And I know that that has its own powerful feelings of time passage and nostalgia. But mine was just a little bit different because, like, I kind of didn't ease into the right. um, the kind because of connective you have tissue kids, of having kids. Yeah. If you have kids and you're, let's say, in your 20s or even if you're me and you're in your 17s, um, mm-hmm. you're right. You then have a connection to a lot of things like, you know, my case was extreme, but like I then was going to kindergarten classrooms and I was going to soccer fields and Mm -hmm. I was doing all this stuff, you know, now uh, not even vicariously, but by association with this child. And, And so then you just had like basically, let's say, I don't know, uh, 30, 32 years Inter, you had 32 years in between being in like an elementary school classroom. Right, yes. Because you didn't have any reason. Yes. You had no, in fact, you were legally prohibited in many states <laughs> that was, yes, from that was, visiting that was elementary a school classrooms. That had to do with something I posted online, but yeah. that was a, to- we've cleared You were it up. hacked. Mm-hmm. No, but no, yeah. I, I, I actually hear what you're saying. I think it's actually a very interesting theory is that for you, because you, you didn't, you didn't have a connection to these things about childhood through your own child. You had a long gap or you had no association with it so then when you go back into it it's just like really intense i think about that with toys sometimes too i've Mm. seen like people kind of joke around about this like oh yeah the best part of having kids is you get to play with their toys, right? Like, no, 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 I'm, I'm helping my kids. No, the best part about not having kids is you can't afford <laughs> well, toys. That's, well, that's kind of the thing. It's like, if, you know, and again, I don't want to, obviously, tons of adults who, uh, are, tons of adults are into, like, Legos without having to have kids involved. But let's just use that as an example. Like, you know, you can kind of say, no, 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 I'm not buying Legos for myself. I'm buying Legos for the kiddo. But then, you know, what are the parents doing? But, like, you know, like geeking out and spending a whole evening making a m- millennia- Millennium Falcon. Millennial Falcon? I wanted to say, I think it's Millennium. I can't ever remember if it's Millennium or <laughs> it's, Millennial. I'm pretty sure Wait, it's Millennium. It's Millennium Falcon. <laughs> it's Alpha Gen Falcon, I believe. It's, <laughs> wait, no, that's a Marvel superhero. But uh, anyway, yeah. I kind of, so if I want toys, then I just got to like buy the toys and then just like, sure. you know, be judged appropriately. Um, speaking of 30 Rock, I was on the airplane the other day, and I was scrolling TikTok, as I want to do, and certain shows will just start, I, maybe it has to do with my algorithm or the things that I allow to play a little bit longer, but there will just start being a bunch of clips of some show that somebody somewhere, and I don't even know if it's a bot or not, I don't know who the human is who would do this, but they'll just start pulling pretty sizable clips from some show, and it'll 
it'll end up being a lot of the same show, if that makes sense, mm-hmm. for no reason, and then it just goes away, and then it's just never happening again. But it seems to be a 30 Rock thing right now, and the scene that came up, and I'm almost tempted to ask you to just... Um, by by the way, if we ever hit a day where like we get pulled down from YouTube because we play NBC clips, yeah, we're out of the game. Shut it down. Yeah. I mean, we just we got we've got absolutely nothing at that point. Mm-hmm. But it was the scene where Dennis Duffy is essentially <laughs> he's not really breaking up with Liz, but he's recognizing that they're breaking up. Like he comes to Thirty Rock and reads like a prepared statement. Do you have any memory of this? Does he? I can sort of remember him bursting into the writers' room, but that's kind of a. Trope he's in the writers' room, show, yeah. and he's basically like, again, it's. It, I think that the. I think the deal is that Liz has been trying to break up with him, you know, for like, ever, and somehow they all kind of they always keep coming back together. But he kind of shows up to, I guess you could say, break up with her, but really it's more to just like acknowledge that she doesn't want to be with him anymore. I have, weirdly, when I type in Dennis Duffy breakup, I just have the transcript of it that somebody posted in the 30 Rock subreddit. Okay, well, just read it Which then, I could that's... read it, except I don't know if I, I feel like this is a delight for you and listeners who want to remix things. I don't know if I want to put my voice to these words as I uh, as I scan ahead. <laughs> oh, right, because it is, it's, it's the kind of thing that is funny because it's coming from the character of Dennis and it's a joke about the person who would say that stuff. Are you worried? It's no, a no. I, I will. I will do it. But I, I, I will do it if I can't find. Um, yeah. If I can't find. Just, the, I just think it'll just be funnier my coming. TikTok feed. I just think it'll be funnier no, it coming is. from. What's his? Do you remember his name? Genevieve mayhem. Is his in, name is Mayhem his Johnson. His name is. Or is Gen, Have we talked about this on the show? How hard Genevieve came down on me for saying referring to that character as Mayhem, and oh, I hear sort of Mayhem. It's Mayhem. I realize that, but I mean Genevieve was brutal on the podcast like this was years ago and i have heard radio commercials for mm. uh what is the insurance company it's not all it's state? Allstate. yeah there are radio commercials that aired i believe i don't know this winter on sports radio where the voiceover person is say both a man and a woman say mayhem like yeah straight i think up you played it may- on tbtl oh did i so i already yeah. i already litigated this in the public sphere and you I won by the way it <laughs> and was I a won. unanimous decision by me Okay. That you were in the right. I when I was a kid, I call I thought it was mayhem. For some yeah, reason, him in that place, unless there's a worth after it, I don't even want to talk about it. Unless it's a hunky Aussie brother who's named Hemsworth. Oh yeah. Um, uh, hem mayhem mayhem. It's very like it's it's very grown up. And when you're a kid, if you were a kid and you didn't think it was mayhem, yeah. I don't know. What, I mean, also Genevieve might have been that one kid. Genevieve was probably I'm very sure precocious she was. I'm and sure. very. She was probably correcting other kids. Uh, all you right, know, so I can't so find. How else do you get into Wellesley? That's right. And so I can't find the. Um, I can't. Okay. Find, well, then don't. What, you no, know no, what? No, no, no. Here's what I'm going to do. Why don't I, we make an intro tape down the road? Here we go. Let's be a. I had the music set up. I got to do this now. Okay, oh, you ready? I'm doing this. I'm doing this, but I wanted Love music. It. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be lemon, and that just means I just stand looking at you apoplectically okay. in the in the writer's room, and um, uh, I think probably um, I'm trying to think of what Frank Lutz? Frank Rossitano's hat. Oh yeah, Frank. No, <laughs> yeah. no it probably says like you know kung fu on it. It says VCR. <laughs> Dear Liz Lemon, while other women have bigger boobs than you, no other woman has as big of a heart. When I saw you getting ready to go out and get nailed by a bunch of <laughs> is this the way- is this the one? <laughs> yes, it's a hundred percent the one. <laughs> I'm sorry, I need to keep my composure. When I saw you getting ready to go out and get nailed by a bunch of guys last night, I knew for sure it was over between us. And for the first time since the '86 World Series, I cried. And if it was up to me, we'd be together forever. But there's a new thing called women's liberation, which gives you women the right to choose. And you have chosen to abort me. (laughs) And that I must live with. So tonight, when you arrive home, I'll be gone. I officially renounce my squatter's rights. (laughs) For For all of us whose exes have chosen to abort them on this New Year's Eve, say yes. Yes to love. Yes to life. Yes to staying in more. Oh, God, that's a pretty good Dennis Duffy. I wasn't even doing... You'll know when I do the voice. Isn't it interesting that that guy, I might have brought this up before, 
is, I mean, the Dennis Duffy character is so iconic in our mind, uh, in our minds, because we love that show. And then also those Mayhem commercials are just ubiquitous. And I couldn't tell you the guy's name. Does he have the highest face recognition for the lowest name recognition oh, of anybody? Well, it's driving me bananas that I can't think of his name because Genevieve says his name. And Genevieve has such a crush on him. Um, who plays? That's, and I was The second question I was going to ask, is there a guy who's more conventionally attractive who's probably the subject of fewer kind of, uh, you know, romantic thoughts because he, he was such a numbskull in the Dennis Duffy character. And he's such a numbskull as mayhem that it's like, it, it sort of overrides the fact that he is, you know, a very conventionally handsome man. Can I blow your mind right now? <sighs> Chris is walking mind. out. <laughs> so his name is Dean Winters. Okay. okay. I should have known and that. And have you seen the commercial where he, as mayhem, Mm -hmm. Is playing basketball with his brother? Yes, it's I like have, the but... least sort of allegorical one because it's not like I'm representing uh -huh. a bee or I'm representing a right. bird in Larry Bird's attic or what have you. He's just he's yeah. representing like your brother who's playing basketball with yeah, you I, and, and dunking I've, on I've you. I've seen the commercial, but I can't tell you the specifics, which makes maybe means it's not a very effective commercial. Yeah, it's kind of the, remind me. It's the least creative. They're just playing basketball like in the driveway. It's him and his brother, and I think he maybe I I don't know if he smashes the the backboard or a car window or. Or how mayhem is created through this, you know, pick up basketball game. But the part that may or may not be interesting is he's playing his real life brother, who is also oh. an actor, who I'm looking it up now, I believe is Bradford Winters, who is also oh, an actor in, I believe, a procedural of some sort. That's uh, clever because oh, like they will have been... that. They will look alike. I wonder if in Mayhem's family, if it's one of those families where everyone gets a name that's similar, like his brother is named Mayhaps. <laughs> what if, oh, I want to make a whole bunch of commercials <laughs> like with Mayhaps. This is a whole family of, <laughs> yeah. of kids that's all May yes, something. Yes, Mayflowers, Mayhaps. Yeah, exactly. Um, I actually, this is not totally on topic, but it is something that I'd like to tell you about, which is my new favorite word, Andrew, that I've learned here uh, as part of this uh, corporate event that I've been helping out with. I told you that it's a, uh, it's a cloud uh, software company that's based, uh, or at least has a huge part of its business in Australia and New Zealand. And I've been meeting a lot of really wonderful people. As we, as the audio drop says, Australians are wonderful people. Mm -hmm. um, and also Kiwis are wonderful people. And I've, st I've taken to just going, are you Aussie or Kiwi? And I've found that if at least I know the kind of slang for both, then whatever the person answers, they don't seem that offended. What probably they wouldn't like would be me assuming they were Australian if they're from New Zealand or vice versa. So that's how you solve that problem. If you're ever talking to someone and you're unsure, just ask, hey, are you Aussie or Kiwi? Can I, ask I feel a, like that's a sign of respect. Can I ask a question that might get me out of even more jams? And it's not even really a jam. It's more of a preference. But like... Aussie is, it is a slang, but you can also say, hey, are you Australian? Or do you know somebody who's Australian yeah. or my friend who's Australian? But is is there, can you say, like, what is the New Zealand equivalent of that that isn't the slang word Kiwi? Because Kiwi. Kiwi seems like too slangy for mm -hmm. me. Like, you can use Aussie. See, I'm saying, I think the slangy, to me, throwing down the slang, it, it kind of, it sort of signals subconsciously that we're all cool and no one mm. should be offended by me not knowing which place you're from. Yeah, that's fine. But you don't want to do that. Well, New Zealand, I think you'd just say, are you from New Zealand? Are you, but then? yeah, so, the, but there's no like adjective for it. In other words, you can say, New are Zealander? you from, are you from, you know, are you from Australia? Are you... Do you fancy all black? <laughs> are you an Australian, which would be the same as saying, are you oh, a no, New Zealander, but right. are you are you Australian, yeah. not are you an... You say, are you a friend of Peter, <laughs> or are you a friend of Paul? <laughs> Peter <laughs> being Jackson, Paul being okay. Hogan. Oh, oh, I, I thought for some reason I just assumed we were doing the Bible stuff there. And you know, if, if Paul Hogan was shooting Crocodile Dundee, Crocodile Dundee 4, and he had to go... And, and and poach some of the film professionals that live in New Zealand, you would basically be robbing Peter to pay Paul. Oh, 
is a really good point. That's even more. <laughs> that's even more tortured than what I was going to say. Cause I was gonna say <laughs> what? I, I was going to say, are you a? Peter? I'm going to write an album called <laughs> The Tortured Podcasters Club, and it's going to be a number one hit. <laughs> are you a Bjorn? Is what I was. Are you a Peter? <laughs> are you a Bjorn or are you or a, a John? John. <laughs> yes, exactly. Do you know that? And you know, I love her. You know she's one of my favorite people. You know I have a very high opinion of my girlfriend, but do you know uh, she does not like the song Young Folks by Peter Bjorn and John? Uh, and I don't I don't understand how a person with uh, two ears that are tuned to the listening station could not how about this? You don't have to love the song, but it, she finds it actively annoying. Yeah, it is interesting. I guess it, it takes seems all like kinds. it is made in I a labyrinth. Find that, I almost find that refreshing. Like there, there really are just all kinds of people out there. Because I'm, I'm with you. Like even if you don't like it, it feels like yeah. Well, it's pretty inoffensive. Right. Again, this is going to be showing very much my own sort of preferences. But there's certainly music that that you know hits my ear as a little on the aggressive side or loud or or fast driving. And for the people that like that, that's what they like about it. But it is more polarizing. I feel like the song Young Folks by Peter Bjorn and John is just so not polarizing. It, like it almost, and I love the song, but it almost like was just written for like, um, uh, uh, you know, a, 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 a TV commercial or something. It's so relentlessly catchy. I wonder if it, and now this is really unfair because I, I don't, I honestly do not have a good read as to whether or not Becca listens to this and it might be uncomfortable to hear people try to analyze her taste, but I do wonder if there is a connection, whether or not, whether or not it's even a, um, a conscious connection. I wonder if there's something about like that sort of era or the people who listened or were obsessed with that music in that era, which was you and me. So I don't know if that speaks of your relationship. That uh, her that, standards have dropped, <laughs> right? Exactly. Over the decades. That for some reason there's just you know maybe it just subconsciously reminds her of something or a type of thing or person that um, maybe, but she's refreshingly kind of. A blank slate on that kind of stuff. Yeah, like that not is not judgy. how she navigates the world. Like yeah. she just, yeah, she like, she you know um, went to college and had a kind of a fun college experience and like I and 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 seemed to like pretty much most kinds of people. Like she spends so much less time telling me about the people she doesn't like than I tell her about the people I don't like. Yeah, for right. Reasons. Yeah. My ears like, are burning. Just, not how she navigates the world, in which is which is lovely actually, and I'm impressed by it. Um, but uh, I, maybe that's just what happens when you're raised in a loving, supportive home where you're not being told the world could end at any moment. I don't know <laughs> if that's the result, but I just think wrong? that's so funny because of all the songs, it just it seem it just seems like it's so it's so uh, relentlessly poppy. It's like it's like it's made to make your feet tap. So at worst, it's like I don't feel like tapping my feet right now, but like it isn't you know guar or something that I think of. <laughs> I was I think I was you were gonna say guar. I was literally looking up guar song so I could say this joke to you when you were done. <laughs> Weirdly, she loves the song "Let Us Slay" by Guar. <laughs> <laughs> and, that is not to that is not to yuck any yums on guar. I mean, I get that that's a high like a that's, I don't know it's high concept, yeah. but it is a conceptual yeah, thing which yeah. I give them credit for. Okay, so I have been. Uh, working with a lot of folks from both Australia and New Zealand, both Peters and Pauls. Mm -hmm. uh, no Marys yet, but soon, I hope. And I, you know, there was this script that was that was written up for me that we've been working on and tweaking and changing. And there was a word in there that I just I left this part alone because it just felt like I saw it in two places, and I assumed it was a some kind of a term of art in the cloud software space that I just didn't know. And it was like spruik, S P R U I K. It was like spruik the performers, and I was like, we we have a band called Spruik, or what? Like it's it's just. And I was just I just left it over like ten revisions of the script. I never touched the word spruik until spruik. I finally got up the nerve to ask somebody who was Australian, and they said, "Oh, that's hype it up to." Like to hype something up is to spruik it up. Oh, to I spruik. like that. Okay. Isn't that a cool word? Yeah, yeah, I like that. It's so much more fun than hype. Like, oh man, I gotta. Hey, listen, do me a favor before you bring me out. Could you really like, kind of spruik up the fact that, like, you know, we're doing TBTL live in Philadelphia on September 28th, and we now have very cool new art for the spruik. whole thing, which I just saw going out on Instagram today. Oh yeah, 
Thank you to Max. That's awesome. Yes. I, I love what the, can't I lo- Max do in the artistic know. space? Not, let's, uh, you know, if we let's think about that too Max much, up. I'll start Spook. to resent him. So let's. Let, he can sing. He can dance. He can act, mm-hmm. and he can make awesome live you know, podcast. I'm going to be honest with you. You don't think he's that good of an actor? Wow, Luke. That is impressive because I feel maybe the, is that all left brain stuff? Uh, no, or, I thought the right brain is that was right the, brain I stuff. Thought, I, Jeez, I haven't. I don't have either, so I can't answer the question. Is it smooth brain? We're smooth brain. We're smooth brain. Exactly. He's. I, I guess I sort of figured that the the ability to our so our friend Max uh, designed the poster for us, uh, and it's really good. Um, but Max is also an actor, and I I guess I would have kind of figured that the the folks that were good at that stuff would not necessarily be good at the drawing part. I I assumed those those sort of connected to. The two different sides of the brain, but maybe not. Maybe oh, it's all no. the art that, side. That, that connects to me. I think, yeah, I think it's all the creative side. I don't know which side I of see. the brain it is. But I'm, I'm not, by the way, I'm not saying, Luke, you're wrong to think that. And I don't know if I'm right, but I'm just Please, saying that. Please, use it, my new name. It's Spruce it's, Burbank. Spruce. <laughs> it's the living hype man. <laughs> the Spruke Luke. Um, I, so it's spelled. <laughs> the so Luke is Spruke. It, it, Spruke. <laughs> Actually, that's the show title right there. The Luke is Spruke. Um, boy, I didn't do that's not under the bell either. That's just on me and my fat fingers. Um, not a very good bell ring there. Okay, first of all, I do it does make sense to me that all those creative endeavors would sort of like be not that everybody yeah, can do all right. of them, but it, I see a connection there. But in all seriousness, Max is amazing, and thanks, Max, so in good. Brooklyn for it's... making that poster for us. Um, but also, Spruik is, and did you say it's S P R U I K? I like That's what that. I thought. Am I wrong on that? No, I don't know. I, I like it. I, I didn't look it up. Type it but. in. See what you get. I think it means to tell a to really like tell a story very kind of excitedly or to embellish or whatever. It's it's. Um, I'm, I'll also mention that I said I told this story to a different like Aussie, and I said I didn't know what Spruik was, and they were like I don't know what Spruik is. So apparently Spruik is like. Very, very, it's niche even in Australia, but I love it. Okay, Boop. well, as I look at the definition here, it does sort of seem like it is a little bit more specific than I was interpreting your definition. So you can't just like go into a party and just like the DJs are hot, the dancers are hot, and you're mm-hmm. just like, this party is spruik. Or if a party is like sort of not all of that, and then you're like, well, maybe if we put on some Peter, Bjorn, and John, mm-hmm. then we're really going to spruik this up. I guess it really is specific to giving a speech. It says here, um, I don't want to use the AI. Come on. I, I, I'm trying Ugh, desperately to not I hate use that so the, the Google's much. AI. Ugh. Um, so here's the oh, the Collins Dictionary. Hey, Collins got a dictionary now. To make or give a speech, especially uh, extensive or elaborately. So it is about oration very specifically as I sort of scroll through these definitions. To give a speech um, elaborately, to orate. Uh, so it's specific to your job there this week. Right. But even that definition isn't really what they needed me to do. It was being used to say, basically, like, hype up the musical act. Because it's Nashville, Andrew. I don't know if I've mentioned that. And so there's been a lot of music and stuff. And so I think the thing, basically what the person who had written the script was trying to say was, host, a.k.a. yours truly, um, was supposed to, at that point, kind of be like, hey, how great was that band? Like, kind of spruik mm. them. Like, hype them up or remind everyone. Which is a little bit to the side of the definition you're reading, which makes me think it's that's part of why it's so niche. It's like, it's a slang that someone was using, maybe where they're from in Australia, the person who wrote the script, that's how they use the term, but that's not even really the official definition. Well, it's, I mean, I am seeing like kind of to give a speech in the style of kind of a carnival barker or a mm-hmm. barker spiel. So that's uh-huh. what I'm saying. I'm not disagreeing with you, but I, when you first said it, I thought it meant like we can use hype, generally speaking. You know what I mean? Music yeah. can hype up a crowd or whatever. It seems like this is specific to kind of like going out there and being the MC and 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 spruiking mm-hmm. in that manner. Yeah, I, I guess. This, the, the person who translated for me literally used the word hype, but I think they would probably agree now, and I'll get him over here. He's a very tall, muscular mm. man named Hayden um, that uh, he was slightly off. Well, I, or, or I mean, just I mean, didn't maybe in didn't feel he had to give the context because you were doing it as an orator. You are a right. carnival Spook. barker, and that's what I always say. I am. I'm the—they call me Travis Barker. 
um, in that I'm uh, covered in tattoos and I play drums and I'm married to a Kardashian. Oh, I thought it was, for some reason that sounded very much like a bar stool reference to me. Um, mm. Is there a like Travis one of the like involved? guys in like? It's like it does like a pardon, pardon my take or something. So I thought isn't isn't one it wasn't who founded uh, maybe a, for some reason Travis. Well, no, that's Dave Portnoy. Oh, that's he's, Portnoy's he's bad yeah. news. I have a complaint about him. I, call it I bet you do. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Top Story. Okay, super quick. My my the thing that happened this morning was that I woke up so rested because I went to bed at like eight o'clock last night. I, we wrapped up some recording you and I, and then I was like, mm, you know, this is Nashville, man. There's just stuff going on everywhere. Like from my little hotel room here, I can just see so many cool outdoor spaces where people are just sitting and eating. And I thought like, maybe I can rally and cause I've never really been out in Nashville. Uh, I've been through here a couple times, uh, going to other places in Tennessee for like CBS stories, but I never spent any time here. But instead, I just watched All In With Chris Hayes um, and ordered a Chipotle DoorDash and ate that Chipotle and watched that Chris Hayes and then absolutely passed out <laughs> the second that was over, which meant I slept mm, like, let's do, do, carry the one. I think I slept like 10 hours or something. Because you I slept got up through. At, you didn't wake up in the middle of the night and have no. like the Chipotle sweats or anything. No, no. I'm I, this. This is one of the only... It was, is it a superpower? I am not one of those people that if I go to bed too early, I will then wake up in the middle of the night and be like, well, my body's done sleeping. It doesn't matter when I go to bed. I will be able to sleep until, well, in this case, it was like six, no, it was 545. I think I got up at 545, which is pretty early, but I had gone to sleep so early that I was rested and refreshed and decided I would get out in Nashville and go on a little jog. And the reason that this was the ultimate flex was I was jogging while people were still coming out of the bars. And mm. that, as a person who has many times been the people coming out of the bars, when I tell you, Andrew, that I felt like everything in my life was going more mm -hmm. okay. Like there was something, I mean, the, the sun was rising over the Cumberland River. It was actually just beautiful. And there was something about me being up, getting ready to take on the day. And I don't do this a lot. And I'm, this is not supposed to be a humble brag at all. It's just, there's something about, it's like same thing happens in Vegas. If you are out being, doing something that's probably good for you and kind of healthy at an hour when a lot of other people are coming down off of doing something that is probably not great for them. God, it felt good. And boy, did I ever feel smug jogging around Nashville. Yeah, you got to give them the bad feeling for a change. I know it's so often gone the other way in my life. I'll tell you that I've had many an experience of stumbling out of somewhere as the birds were chirping and just being so disappointed in myself. Um, also, they have gnats in the morning here, oh, which yeah. seems like, uh, what do we say? Flying a kite at night. Mm. Like, have you ever, have you ever heard of morning gnats? I thought that was strictly a dusk activity. You know, I'm not sure. Well, I mean, gnats are mosquitoes, by the way. Are they biting you? Are Wait, gnats are mosquitoes? These were not. These no, were no, not I said things. gnats or mosquitoes. I was oh, asking. gnats. Okay, so they're just flying Bees? around. <laughs> Beat? So they're flying around, but they're not biting you. They're just kind of like. No, they're just the, that cloud. The but you know that kind of, of cloud yeah, that you yeah. don't see until you're in it? Yeah, I think it's probably just the moisture in the air, right? It's the humidity. I guess so. Yeah. I just, my, you know, maybe also <laughs> when I was like in, living in Seattle, my, my memory of my most vivid memory of gnats was being a kid growing up in Seattle and riding my bike around Green Lake on the outside path. So that kind of like little gravel path that's on the far outside. And they're just being clouds of gnats that you'd be dodging and you'd be hoping that you didn't get hit in the face with. And that was always at like seven o'clock at night. And I was probably supposed to be home for dinner and it was a warm summery night. It's like a, it's very rooted in a very specific hour of the night for me or hour of the, you know, early evening. That's what I associate with clouds of gnats. And this morning at 6 a.m. jogging around Nashville, I was hitting so many clouds of gnats and it just felt, it felt weird to me. Yeah, you know, I don't know if you would realize this. I think you would maybe from your time living in New York, 
although I'm not sure what mosquitoes are like in the city, but, you know, growing up in the country in Ohio and then, you know, grow and then spending uh, my early adult life in uh, New Hampshire where, you know, like you have kind of um, – you, you kind of warmer, more I would say more humid climates uh, during the summer. Like we had way more mosquitoes, and one of the things Vives and I were mesmerized by when we moved to Seattle was the the relative lack of mosquitoes. We would see gnats all over the place, and Genevieve is very susceptible to getting uh, bitten by mosquitoes. I am not, mm-hmm. by the way, so I don't know. If that I, I read recently that if you're somebody who gets bitten a lot by mosquitoes, it means you talk a lot because you're mm-hmm. exhaling a, a lot of like the, the, the gas from inside uh-huh, your is body. Is that what they track? Mosquito. Yeah, I told that to Genevieve. She had other theories um, as to what I could do with my theory, in fact. But yeah, so that was that was something like we came here and we're like, there were like practically no mosquitoes. I'm sure like you've probably been bitten by a mosquito at some point in your life in the Seattle area. So I'm not saying there are no mosquitoes. But nothing compared but to the Northeast. Literally nothing compared. Like we just thought this was a magic land. Yeah, and it is. And I love that. And in fact, what I love about the Madrona Hill studio and my house is the downside is it's kind of perpetually a little breezy up there just because of, I don't know, the river and the vagaries of uh, geology or something. But one of the things is I have a never, literally never seen a mosquito at my house. Mm. And I would trade almost anything for that because maybe because I didn't grow up with a lot of mosquitoes in my life, except when we would go camping. So we'd go camping at like a church camp out at Lake Wenatchee and we'd set up our tents and we'd be in the woods and it would just be the whole night would be trying to battle back the mosquitoes. It's why I've never been at least since I became aware of the connection, I've never been a big, like, let's hang out in the woods kind of guy in the summertime. Like, it being camping amidst a bunch of trees in the woods where there's, like, a bunch of cedar, pine needles on the ground, and it's like the, the sun is kind of obscured because, you know, you're in the you're in the shade, and it seems like there are a lot of mosquitoes. That is not... I don't find that very pleasant at all. I am very, very... Um, easily put off by the by the presence of even a few mosquitoes. Yeah, well, there are a lot of things about um, the woods that uh, I don't. I mean, as far as spending extended periods of time, I like a nice like I, I like a nice walk or like mini day hike through like a nice rich verdant. Yeah. Um, forest area much more than I enjoyed going on those type of uh, little day hikes in a place like Los Angeles where everything seemed very dusty and dry like I didn't enjoy being in that style of nature uh-huh. whereas I sure. really like there and again I, I people know me I'm not trying to make it sound like I go on a lot of like day hikes or something but like there's a place around here that you might know called Wallace Falls that I just find to be incredibly beautiful because again it's so green and there's rivers everywhere and literally there are, are waterfalls and so um, like I love that but no i mean to spend any time other than maybe a hike and a, and a picnic on a rock there get me the hell out of there i need a shower i need a toilet i need i need all kinds of things you're what is the drop we what do we play there's a i'm i'm greasy i'm sleazy and i need oh, a shower yeah 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 i think um i'm uh, hairy yeah, i'm scary yes. and Yep, uh, I'm grimy, I'm gross, and I need yeah, a shower. Yeah, I'm grimy, I'm slimy, and I need a shower. That's what it is, That's exactly. how you're feeling yep, out there. Yep, yep, yep. Um, okay, uh, you had said yesterday on the show, Andrew, uh, towards the end, oh, let me tell you tomorrow about something going on with dive bars. I think you might have been referring to old teddies or something. And uh, you said, I'm going to tell you about it on tomorrow's show. Well, my friend, it's tomorrow's show. So what, were you, what was going on with you and the dive bars? I have... No idea. No, just joking. I just wanted to scare you there for a little bit. I uh, I almost hesitate to talk about this because I was was going to maybe... Well, first of all, because I think there's already some judgment about this. There's some history here that some people might um, be bummed to hear about. Uh, and also, maybe I needed to keep this place more of a secret. But um, I okay. learned recently that the place uh, right here in my neighborhood... Uh, that used to be the Mandarin Gate is reopening, and it's reopening as something different than what I'd heard it was going to reopen. So, for a little bit of context, of course, the Mandarin the, fence. The, it's going to be the Mandarin fence. It's basically the same, only there's no egress. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I used to egress. <laughs> you have to hop over it. Um, <laughs> but uh, so obviously, I, I don't think I need to explain this to everybody. The Mandarin Gate, though, that, I mean, that was your old haunt. I mean, you've yeah. you, you locked you clocked so many hours drinking and karaokeing and headbutting people there. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. over the years. It was an almost, equal measure. Yes, exactly. As people say about New York, it was almost a, it was almost like another character on TBTL for a long time, mostly before my time on TBTL, but but not exclusively. And then when I started hanging out with you and Camaro Kev, of course, uh, I spent time with you and your crew there as well. And uh, it, you know, in, in in fact, you and I did. Remember, we did like uh, speaking of slimy and grimy. Remember, we did like the TBTL. Origin oh, Tour de crawl. Terrible. Yeah, Tour de Terrible, exactly, where we went to various places. That was places. the most fun night ever that netted us the least amount of money. <laughs> yeah, I'm Everybody sure it paid. Like money. it was a it was not cheap for the people who came on it, but it, all of the money went back into various things about the Tour de Terrible. Like that was a really, really fun time for the people that went on. I've been told. But it was the fi- the the math didn't really math on it. Do you know I totally forget that was before we were with American Public Media or anything. So I had no sense of the business side. I was not dealing I was ma- I was making intros and ruining the show. That was all my roles were not at that true. time. So I, I I didn't even remember that that was supposed to be was that connected to an actual like it fundraising was kind of a donation fundraiser thing? of okay. sorts. It was like We're going to go to all these places, you know, we're going to go to Goldie's and we're going to go to the Mandarin Gate and the mummy is going to take us on a, a walk, uh, where he's going to show us how to like get opium or something, which was funny because one of the people on the walk was a medical doctor who was kind of giving me a look like, I don't think this is, uh, makes any sense. He was like scoring a poppy with a bowie knife. Poppies that he found along Lake City Way. And by scoring, I mean mean, uh, poking them with a knife, not like buying them from a guy who wouldn't make eye contact. It It was just, it was such a fun night, actually. Like, it was really great, but it was like, I think it was like included in the price of admission was a party bus ride. Drinks at the Mandarin Gate, gambling money at Goldie's. It was like a really, it was, but it was so fun. All that is to say, yes, Mandarin Gate, big part of the lore of this show for a lot of years, up until I moved out of Seattle and then it kind of. Then it kind of stopped being such a recurring topic. And what else? What else happened was the pandemic hit because, like, even right. like occasionally, um, you know, Genevieve and Camaro Kev, or sometimes I would tag along. Like, it was still sometimes a location to go at the very end of a night if you still wanted to do some karaoke. And um, but then the pandemic hit. Obviously, it closed for a long time. Obviously, karaoke was out of the question for a long time. And then when it reopened, they decided they weren't going to mess around. Like, the bar was. Very 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 divey anyway mm-hmm. but the thing is we always went there by it was like already like midnight and we were so like so well yes. into our cups by that point that like you just i just didn't consider it in that manner it was just like you know a dark yeah. a dark comfortable womb where people could do karaoke and i could drink where you actually could return to unlike a regular womb <laughs> right exactly one of my favorite things about that womb so mm-hmm. anyway um after the a pandemic, womb with a view <laughs> they uh <laughs> weird of Yank- the ihop <laughs> weird El yankovic <laughs> that's a line from his song i think i'm a clone now <laughs> it's one of my favorite weird hell jokes <laughs> in a womb with a view i think i'm a clone now a clone uh, now <laughs> there's always two of me just hanging around uh anyway so it was still it was it was a special place for a while pandemic hits it closes down it gets rid of karaoke they never bring back karaoke and then i moved to this neighborhood which is like very cl- like in this neighborhood where i live right now there is no Nowhere that is kind of a convenient watering hole. Mm-hmm. And my standards are very low on this. You know what I mean? As far as mm-hmm. like diving. There there is a there's a there's one next to a Chinese restaurant right near the kind of walking bridge that crosses over Aurora that would be very close to me. But like that is the only dive bar I've ever been in that is so close to my house. But I went in, had one beer and said I'm never walking back in that place. Like I mm-hmm. literally I think the bar I was literally made of um of press board where no no i mean a lot of them are made of press board but of of uh plywood i think that a piece of plywood oh. still i mean it was it, yeah. it was it just it, it almost seemed like a front the problem with some of that is stab each other like it was bananas. well right i mean there's a lot of people that are on the economic margins around there and of course they're equally deserving of relaxing or enjoying themselves or whatever but there can be a level of dive bar where the diviness is so intense that you just kind of feel like you're in someone else's space and the someone else's that are in that space are often people that are, you know, kind of living a life of certain kind of life. And it's not like, Hey, aren't we all just from different backgrounds, but we're all enjoying, you know, this, uh, how far is heaven that's playing on the jukebox from Los Lonely Boys. That would be a thing that would literally happen at the, uh, tattletale in LA. Uh There's a point of which you're just kind of like, I'm in a bar where I don't, 
I just don't feel like I can really connect with folks on the level they're at right now kind of a thing. I mean, this one that I'm talking about, I can't even think of the name of it, and it doesn't really matter, but it's kind of across the street from the shopping center where the Mandarin Gate is or was. Um, Uh And it was so burned out. I mean, I can't even explain to you. It's not even like I can't associate with these folks. It's just kind of like, I don't know, there's a, a crate full of cables there like a just I mean, yeah it really did not seem like a drinking it's establishment. like you could be home drinking if this was really i mean it would be a more comfortable awful. environment it was just awful 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 all around and yeah. i don't know exactly if they have a customer base it, it, I, I don't i don't really know what was going on with that place but it's and so my point is since i've moved here um, I've missed having the experience that I had in my old neighborhood, which was having a place like Teddy's, which was, you know, some people would describe it as a dive bar. I think of it as just like a, a humble neighborhood bar that was, mm-hmm. you know, four blocks from my house. And I would go there and I would know the folks. And, you know, that, that was the that was the ultimate for me as far as what I'm looking for in that kind of experience. I, I, I lowered my expectations when I moved here, but like there was just like literally nowhere to go. The Mandarin Gate was the only place that was sort of like in that sort of proximity, like. I don't have to like take a bus or like there are places that are in walking distance, but it's like, well, you walk three quarters of a mile or a mile, which is like it's just a little up a hill and, you know, and a not not wonderful sidewalk to walk along like 105th or something like that. So anyway, it's um, the rickshaw. We know what you're talking about. Actually, it's I haven't spent as much time as the rickshaw. It's the one across uh, Greenwood from the rickshaw, the pub at Piper's Creek, which I've been to a bunch. And I like that place. But again, it's a little bit more effort to get there and and whatever um but so the mandarin gate we learned a few months ago and talked about on the show that it was closing and we kind of said farewell to it but we also said on the show or at least i did i think it was barney's movie in that episode of the simpsons don't cry for me for i'm already dead like the mandarin gate for all purposes was already we'd already said goodbye it was a shell of whatever whatever had been charming and fun about it had stopped being the case so long ago that it wasn't we were not we we're not saying goodbye to the mandarin we'd, we'd said goodbye to the mandarin gate long long before it had it went it closed at 10 p.m i think they only Oof. i think they were just making their money from you know take out chinese food which was like you know mediocre american style chinese food that you could take out like, this is the only time you can that, say but. this at the Mandarin Gate, nothing good happens before 10 p.m. Right, exactly. And so no karaoke. They close at 10. Like, just like everything that used to be. You had a, I took a photo one time and sent it to you and a whole bunch of friends. It was like a, they still have this blackboard that used to list all these fun things like karaoke and various <laughs> things. And like one by one, they were all like crossed out. It was like God. it was like the most symbolic. I'll see if I could. God, if I could find that and use it show as pick. a show pick today. But that was years ago. So anyway, the, the Mandarin Gate, for our purposes, was gone a long, long time ago. A long, long time ago. And then what I heard was it was closing down and somebody was going to open a restaurant there, like maybe like an Indian restaurant or something that has, you know, cuisine that I'd be interested in getting takeout from, but not filling that neighborhood bar hole in my heart. Um, And uh, is that that extreme song? Did I say hole in my heart because of that? GD yeah. commercial that's still airing during Mariners games. Cult of personality. <laughs> that, that's, the one I, that's the one I was thinking of. And uh, anyway, so that leads me to, I think, where you know where I'm going with this is um, there's some news about that space, and it's not going to be a restaurant. It is going to be a bar. Now, exciting. I, I learned of this from a, a saddened... 10 who posted it on social media somewhere because they took a photo of the outside of it and at the time it just had this very temporary looking sign and you're going to hate the name of this place and it says like the vibe bar and grill coming soon and it really was a sad picture and the person who posted it said wow this is really we expect more from the place that used to be the mandarin gate or like what a sad outcome and like i saw it i'm like i understand that but also What's going to go on at the vibe? <laughs> like, let, let's let's take a peek inside Caught here. A vibe. And it has. Maybe are you coming for the ride? What is that? Is that extreme? That's Willow Smith. Ah. Uh, who I believe records under the name Willow. That song is great. By the way, maybe that'll be my music for your weekend. Um, although it's it was so so popular three years ago, it's, I'm not telling anyone anything they don't know. But um, I know that song. Uh, There's can a I vibe just, can... in my heart that <laughs> yes. can only be Fishbone, given. the music yes, of Fishbone. Exactly. I uh, may I just offer my uh, agreement, Andrew, that 
you never know what the vibe might be at the vibe. And yeah. also it can't be worse than the Mandarin gate was. And it is better than nothing happening in there. I'm not trying That's to exactly how I feel. invalidate the feelings of the person who posted. I think I can understand the spirit of that post, which would basically be 10 years ago, this place was called the Mandarin gate and a lot of fun went on there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we took, I believe both Davy Rothbart and at a different time, television's Chris Hayes to the Mandarin gate. <laughs> So the people that have darkened the door of that place just by our recommendation is really something. And it was a, it was a really fun, special place for us that was kind of gross and weird, but we loved. And now it's something called the Vibe Bar and Grill. And if you went from 10 years ago, Mandarin Gate, to right now, Vibe Bar and Grill, that would be a real bummer. But right. I think your point, Andrew, it's not what the transition was. Yeah. And, and the fact and that so, it was just going to be a restaurant, which, you know, no, no shade on restaurants. Like, I, uh, hey, I'm on the record, Luke. I like yeah. restaurants. Pro restaurant. But the fact that I can, like, without having to make a plan to, like, mm -hmm. go watch a Mariners game, like, I can have that notion and be somewhere in, like, probably 10 minutes, like, a few blocks and and, and cross a parking lot. Like, and, like, and again, I'm not saying that I'm going to be, like, the vibe is going to be, like, Teddy's where everybody knows your name. I just came up with that. Um, mm, and everybody good. yells Norm when I walk through the bar, or walk into the bar for some reason that I don't understand. My name's Because of your famous Norm core aesthetic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're like, Norm. Someone core. quietly says core. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, was saying <laughs> core. I was about to say that. Too, Are you so. doing a Hans moment? Yeah. So I thought it was already open. It has not opened yet, um, but it's still. But it looks like now they've they've replaced that temporary sign with like a, a permanent sign that is very much like the Mandarin nice. Gate. Just but like and again. I don't love the name. It's called the vibe. I mean, that's gonna that's not gonna like grow old gracefully. Obviously, it already hasn't. But like you know, it looks like a sign that used to say the Mandarin Gate. Individual letters, like a legit operation that seems yeah. like they're investing in it. And I've yeah. already they've already posted some photos online on Yelp of what it's gonna look like. And it's gonna look like a vi again. I'm not saying this is a bar that like is going to change my life. Or you're gonna walk in and you're gonna be like, I this is the this is why you come to Seattle. And you're gonna write. To your friends back home about I mm -hmm. went to this place called the Vibe in Seattle and it really captures the spirit and essence of the city. No, of course not. It's going to be a generic sports bar, but it's got uh, pool tables in there. It looks like it's got dark oh. boards in there. It looks like they're going to, oh. this is the important part. It looks like they're going to sell alcohol in there. Okay. And they have a All bunch right. of TVs in there. And like the idea that I'll be able to just sort of mosey on over there and take in a, a Mariners game uh, really appeals to me. I think that's very promising. And again, I don't say that to to invalidate the nostalgia anyone else is feeling for the old version of it. But if I were lived at your house uh, and, and was wanting to go have somewhere to go and have a drink and watch the Mariners, I would feel similarly encouraged because again, you, it doesn't need to be the greatest experience of your life. It just needs to be a place where the bar is not made out of duct tape. They have not yeah, recently exactly. crossed out every fun thing they used to offer. Like you just need a standard place where you can sit at the bar, order a drink, the Mariners will be on, maybe throw a dart or two. That's that's it. It's a low bar, so to speak, and this place may clear it, and that's that's encouraging. Yeah. There's a right way to rock and a wrong way to roll. You can just listen to your soul. Just remember that life is number one. You can be having so much fun. Alright, we got a few blurs days to do today. I nice. want to mention that we're recording a little bit earlier. Very than, demure. We're recording a little bit earlier than usual, so there are some people who might be sending in blurs days at the last minute. Uh, if you did that and you didn't get in today's, my apologies, but we will get to you. My apologies. This is happening because of my scheduling, so don't be mad at Andrew, please be mad at me. But don't be mad for long, and also no. don't be disheartened. We will read any Blur's Day messages that come in. Babe, I believe... don't go away mad, just go away. That's right. Wait, no, um, but don't go away. But actually, but no, please no, stay here, because we need you away, desperately. Please, yeah. Spook. I wanted to mention that there probably won't be Blur's Days next week, but the following week there will be, so we will have a mm. big batch of Blur's Days next nice. week. There in a couple of Thursdays. Pipe and hot. Pipe actually, and no, hot. nice and, and cold like a gazpacho, because it's still going to be summertime. We don't want a big pipe and hot batch one, but don't serve room temperature soup this if you think it's going to be saying. gazpacho because that's this a whole is, other thing. Yeah. 
pop, 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 burn my mouth. Yeah. We have some blurs days here. Uh, by the way, if you want to submit a blurs day, you do it via email. You email me, Andrew, at tbtl.net, and you put blurs day in the subject line. And uh, that's what Matt in Broomfield, Colorado did. Matt says, I'd like to give a blurs day shout out to my amazing wife, Rachel. We mostly work at home together, and I couldn't be more happy in my work life slash personal life balance. You bring joy to my daily life, and you love me for who I am. I love you for who you are. Happy birthday, my great love and my best friend. Very mindful. I've had a lot of people love me for who I could be someday if yeah, I would just sure. get my shit together. And... It's called aspirational love. <laughs> Ebony would like to wish her five. Adrian, an oh, amazing. We know that person. Tenth Blur's Day. I think we've been very demure. We've been wishing Adrian a Blur's Day wish for quite some time now. Ten years old this year. His only request was to party with his with his friends at a trampoline park. But he doesn't know that we have other surprises for him too. Tickets to see his favorite Cobros in Philly next month. Whoa! Oh, hell yeah! Spook. We're also doing a show in Philly next month. Happy Blur's Day to the best <laughs> kid in the world. Your mom and dad love Aww. you to the moon and back. Oh, that's that's fun. something I'd like to mention. It's all ages. That's so right. if your kids have been holding you back. Mm-hmm. Your kids have been ruining your chances of coming to TBTL Live in Philadelphia. You know what? You can come. You can bring them. It's going to be a fun Please family do. environment. I promise you. The Quakers will not allow any shenanigans to go down. <laughs> Trust me. They're going to have Luke on Afterwards, the maybe. Yeah. Before, um, probably. During, never. I am looking forward to seeing you guys there. Thank you, Ebony. And happy Blur's Day, Adrian. <laughs> Louisa says, happy birthday to my 10, Marshall, whose thoughtful, soft, and caring nature Mm. makes my heart melt and my days brighter. By the way, I want to say we have possibly the most romantic, poetic Uh group of Blur's Days ever today, I think. Um, I thought Matt's was very sweet before. It was. It was lovely. And uh, Louisa goes on to say, your grumpy dislike, this is to uh, Marshall again, your grumpy dislike of Mondays, your enthusiastic Mm. support of my consumption of rosé wine, and Uh overall thirst for life are just the icing on the cake, really. I'm so enormously glad that we found each other in the middle of it all, and here's a traveling far and wide together. May this new lap around the sun and be the best one yet. You. Very demure. I thought that it was going to say your dislike of Mondays and your love of lasagna. I know. I was, you I are was, Garfield. I was geared up for it. Flash says, happy Blur's Day to Juliet. She remains my guiding star, my sweet English rose, and my perfect combination of smarts, charm, and beauty. She is equally delighted by sunny days out, long conversations with friends, and new stationery. She has Hmm. the knowing of many things and considered options. No, wait, hold on. Let me say this again. She has the knowing. Very mindful. Not mindful reading here. She has the knowing of many things and considered opinions on the rest, and I believe she reads oh. to breathe. Happy Blur's Day from that grizzly tech squatch lifelong project you took on a few decades ago. Aww. Happy Blur's cute. Day, Juliet. Very sweet. And it's a grizzly. Yeah, grizzly tech, tech squatch? squatch lifelong project. Isn't that for techno squatch with <laughs> spread grizz? Genevieve referred to me as her project for a long time, probably the first 10 years of our relationship. <laughs> My project is complete. <laughs> Can I just mention, uh-huh. speaking of the uh, techno geeks with spreadsheet, this uh, this conference I'm helping out with is a, sort of has a financial aspect to it, including accounting. And I just saw somebody this morning wearing a T-shirt that said "Freak in the Sheets." And it was a spreadsheet. <laughs> a spreadsheet. That's pretty good. And I I just knew I was going to have a fun time. Yeah. It just delighted me that that was the vibe. I love it. And finally, Justice says, a very happy belated Blur's Day to Biagio and Duluth. Who loves you, baby? From his Cute. very bad, no good, forgetful, and neglectful brother-in-law, Justice, in Thunder Bay. P.S. See you at the Tens meetup at Ursa Minor Brewing in yes. Duluth on Saturday, August 24th, 2 p.m. That's right. That's yes. not just... Very demure. That's not just for Biagio, but that's for everybody. If you're in that area, you want to meet up with Justice and the gang. That's Ursa Minor Brewing, Saturday, August 24th, 2 p.m. Absolutely. Happy Blur's Day, everybody. Indeedly do. Happy Blur's Day, everybody. All right. We are nearly at the end of the week, but of course, it would not be complete without a TBTL Friday, which we will bring you 
tomorrow. So please do tune in for that. In the meantime, have a great Thursday. Take care of yourselves. Do badly, Mariners. I'm trying to reverse psychology. Oh, no, interesting. Yeah, don't, oh, go on, get. We never loved you. Yeah, ya. get out of here, You're Robles. Us down. Yeah, get it. Very demure. <laughs> um, no, uh, go Mariners. And please remember, no mountain too tall. And good luck to all. Spook. Power out. <laughs>